Hi everyone, and thanks for taking the time to listen to this video. For those of you who listened to the one last month or will listen to it, you'll be aware that I was excited to share the message this month. I believe the Lord gave it to me back then, and in part I was excited because some crazy things have happened and it relates to this topic and I was hoping to see more resolution to share in this month but here we are at the end of the month I'm still waiting to hear details about that and perhaps I'll share a little bit about that uh, further in this video but the general topic of this is to stay close to the Lord and to obey no matter what it reminds me of when we read in John chapter 2 how Mary says whatever concerning Jesus whatever he tells you to do do it and so when we simply obey we see God reveal things that doesn't make sense to the carnal mind how he does it or why he would do it that way <clears throat> but the thing is is God is true to his character we don't have to figure it out he is holy his ways are higher than man's understanding of how things should be done but when we do obey we are rightfully representing who he is and he does everything and perfectly perfect wisdom perfect knowledge perfect period uh, when I first started these videos um, I was aware that God was helping me grow in this concept and I even shared in the first video how when I had driven to California uh, in my move driving my Honda Pilot how I met a homeless man or man that was homeless at the time and the Lord gave me some simple words words seemingly simple to me but God's words, their spirit in their life, they will accomplish that which he sets them forth to do. And over and over again since then, I've seen it in my life and been meeting others who are growing in this as well, that even though it might seem simple, the words where you might be like, oh, yeah, maybe I'll just sound like one of those guys or, you know, God loves you, you know, that kind of thing. Sometimes we need to spit it out and there's a more opportune thing to say, being led by the spirit. Anyways, if you're familiar with that story, uh, God did some awesome things and wrecked me, wrecked him with his love. And um, maybe you saw another example of this concept of obedience that people would oftentimes shy away from. Uh, shy away from radically obeying the Lord. Uh, and radically, I'm sharing that word loosely because Christianity is following Jesus as Lord. If, if there's no obeying the directive of God, then uh, you're not a follower of, you know, a person's not a follower of Christ yet because to be a disciple of Christ is uh, what it means to be a Christian. So, uh, Pastor Dan, for example, if you saw something I had posted in the past, maybe within the last six months or so, he was in South Africa and the Lord had him proclaim that the f spiritual and physical drought was over there and as a sign that it would rain in the sanctuary and he's saying this in front of a group of ministers who are used to the spirit-filled ministry signs and wonders but they're like eh, i think you maybe went a little too far on that one you know sometimes people they get excited and they say things that the lord isn't saying and that is wrong absolutely in this case he was obeying the lord though so a few days later when a conference actually starts he calls down the rain out of obedience and it floods outside but inside briefly Though it continues to rain outside, it, it drizzle, or actually, I shouldn't say drizzle, drops of rain are falling on the leaders in a straight line uh, in that sanctuary. A great example of whatever God says is to do or to say, simply do it because He knows what He's doing. Um, I had a, an opportunity recently that really helped me grow. Uh, I believe I've also shared in one of these videos um, sorry if I haven't but with my desire to go as far as as possible through the Lord and to be amongst the vessels that the vessels here on earth that are participating with God to see this great move of God here on earth he had let me know something along the lines of that I will not be understood um, which led me to further understand I have to be willing to not be understood to not fit the status quo but of course God is not contrary to his own holy character his own holy name so of course it'll be of the Spirit of God but it will not fit man's current rhetoric or traditions or understanding of what ministry should be for example so I shared an example of simply obeying what God says to say um, 
and this pertains to really whatever God says to do, we should do it. That that can be God says to say something to somebody. I have seen it where I should have said something, and because I was wrestling inwardly with what I didn't realize was rebellion going on inside of me, I missed some opportunities where God could have done something powerful to to reach somebody, but because I was not in cooperation, um, I quenched the spirit. And the Bible says, despise not prophecies, quench not the spirit, grieve not the Holy Spirit. Um, it doesn't mean that he's leaving, but we can resist the Holy Spirit. So, this the story I want to share. Uh, I was at Pastor Dan's house. He has monthly meetings in California in Rancho Cucamonga. And what I usually do is I'll go up there early, set up the sound system, and then if I'm able to take a nap, I'll take a nap. So um, I don't remember if it was resting before that or after that, but while I'm sleeping, I hear, I, I'm aware of a little boy, and I'm not, please just hear me out on this. And the little boy says, my heart is very fast or something like that. And you know that Kelly and I are having a, a baby boy. And so my first carnal reaction is like, oh no, is my, is my little boy unhealthy? Um, do I need to pray for his heart? But I was like, man, it, I don't bear witness that that's my son. That presence, there's this, there's not a, there's a knowing inside that that's not my son. So I, I pray, but I'm still like, okay, I had the experience, and this is a good way to handle it. I had the experience, and Lord, I'm doing what I know to do with it, but I'm not going to go say I was talking to a little boy, you know. A lot of mistakes happen out of things that are meant to be symbolic. Uh, visions entirely can be literal, and they can also entirely be symbolic, so it's important that we remain in fellowship with the Lord on how to proceed once we have that which we call spiritual experience or supernatural experience to speak in you know our current lingo here anyway so I kind of just let it go and uh, proceed with the worship service and this is an example again of the simply obeying the Lord it reminds me of earlier in my walk um, I would have times where I want to go to the store but the Lord's stopping me and then I'm, I'm literally like I feel like I'm at the starting line just waiting for the, the moment to go. And sometimes it'll be a while. But then when I go, right at the opportune moment, I'd run into somebody where I'd have a great opportunity, usually somebody from the past, right at the right spot at the right time where I could share the gospel with them. Um, that's really, there's, there's a lot I could share about that. Um, but so what I'm getting at is this concept of obeying the vulnerability. Sometimes we, we're so used to having so many obligations that it's not even on our mind to to be vulnerable to obey at every moment and so I've been intentionally trying to go back to that place especially after having a wife and a daughter and um, having some responsibilities that I don't even have to question am I going to church Sunday for example you know I serve there of course I'm going but it's good to again be intentionally in fellowship with the Holy Spirit so anyway so I'm trying to leave you know I've, it's a late night I have church the next morning I've picked up the sound equipment. I'm ready to go home. I know, and by my understanding, I should say, I'm planning on going home so I can get some rest and be strong for the next morning, but I'm withheld from going. So this is a good example of simply obeying. And then, out of that, once I take that moment to obey and I go to that right spot at the right time, this lady shares how her little boy has a very fast heart. And... To be honest, for those of you who are aware of me, this is not a surprise, but there's things that I desire to grow in. The Bible says, earnestly desire spiritual gifts, especially that you might prophesy. So, and if we ask anything according to his will, this is from 1 John now, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, then we, we, we know that we receive whatever we've asked of him. So if you want to grow in whatever God says he wants you to grow in, such as, um, as I quoted from 1 Corinthians, spiritual gifts, that's a good desire. So God wants you to ask for it. So anyways, I've um, been, by God's grace, he's caused me to desire to grow in spiritual gifts. So um, I do recognize at the same time though that out of tradition, people are used to having experiences and only certain experiences, I should say, certain administration or ways the Holy Spirit's working, I should say. And so when something's outside that box, Understandably, they can be apprehensive, but if they take a moment, they can realize if they bear witness if that is the Spirit of God. 
at work. So we should not be quick to speak against things we don't understand. So understandably, this is a different kind of thing where, and I've had different kinds of experiences like this, but I've realized that not everybody, it's less common that people have had these experiences. And I understand also that he's working in me to share with others so he can prepare others. So anyways, I have this experience, like I shared, I hear a little boy's voice say that his heart beats fast. And now at the opportune moment, this lady shares that, that her heart, she has a little boy, really little boy, just like from my um, dream, vision, whatever you want to call it. And I took that as, okay, well, I don't believe that God would show that to me if he was going to do nothing about it. Same thing if you're praying for somebody. You might go forward and lay hands and then if, don't just say your quick, you know, rhetoric, but go in faith and also proceed, like just be vulnerable before the Lord, trusting he's doing it. There's been times where I pray and I go to lift my hand and the Lord stops me and that excites me because that encourages my faith to say, the Lord's doing something, he's not done yet. And so when I'm, when, and especially if they're willing to be still and let the Lord bless them, they'll see a miracle. So she's not um, uh, new to these kinds of things. She, she believes in the working of the Holy Spirit. And so we pray. A few months later, she comes back. And my little, my little girl is trying to get my attention there. So I'll make this video brief. She, she comes back and she shares with me what happened. And she brings a little boy too. And she had been thinking about taking him off medication. Now, I do understand that people can, go, from an experience, make false doctrines. And so I'm not saying don't take medication because it's a lack of faith or any of that kind of teaching. Do whatever the Lord says to do. Um, even the Apostle Paul, he wrote to Timothy to drink a little bit of wine. I don't know the context of that wine before his stomach, right? So that probably enough said with that. Praise the Lord. She, so she shared that she was thinking about taking off medication and she took that as confirmation. So when I shared that in front of the few people that are left, we prayed together in faith, believing. And from that day forth, um, his heart has been normal. And that was, I'm sharing this as an example because this has been a new level for me of vulnerability to simply obey the Lord. Same thing with giving. There's, I'm seeing it more and more literally wherever I go, I, I try to remember to, sometimes I don't even ask, he just tells me how much to give. And it doesn't have to be by my understanding. Um, I'm wondering how much to share. There's so many examples to share that um, even people I've talked to, they've said the same thing. It's just a theme coming around me and it's an encouragement like, yes, there's, there's something the Lord's trying to teach his people regarding this topic of when God says to do something, simply obey. You may not understand why. You may not even see the results. And praise God for those times that we do get to see the results. But let's say you have a bad feeling about driving. That's a great example of just wait. You don't have to figure it out. You don't want to find out why you should have obeyed. In those kinds of examples, or in those kinds of times, I should say. So this is my encouragement to you. This first, if you've never asked to, to walk closer to the Lord, like that doesn't mean he's further away from you, but in your own heart, in your own faith as well, to believe that he really does care about what we call minute things. A lot of times we can get against his religious rhetoric, religious rhetoric to say, oh God, it's religious if you think God cares about what you wear. I've seen it where obeying the Lord with what I wear it opens the right doors. Where I go to eat opens the right doors. Where I go to grocery shop, like I shared, but trying to go to a grocery store, but God's withholding me, or trying to leave a grocery store and God's withholding me. Um, how he... He really wants to train us to walk with him. So I just want to pro help provoke you guys to know that, that there's so much more, so much more than I know. But when we, we grow in it, when we're obedient, great um, way to move forward in this is first consider the written word. Everything he says, of course, is entirely in, uh, true to the righteousness and truth of the original translation of what he said. I actually heard somebody say something interesting um, recently on social media uh, because the enemy's trying to devalidate the truth of and the power of the written word. Um, it's not a new game, but he's trying to do it again. I, heard, I saw the, somebody, some people, person putting up a post 
resisting, you know, somebody that claims to be a follower of Christ, resisting the authenticity of the written word. And my friend who's a prophet doesn't know, not even Facebook friends with him, but a lot of times the enemy's trying to do the same thing in different arenas. So he says, why are you tr busy trying to figure out if certain books of the Bible were left out when you already are not obeying the ones written in there? My point in sharing that is when you grow in obeying the written word, you're growing in obeying the Lord and knowing his character, who he really is, the holiness of who he is. You get to know him better that way and in prayer. And as you get to know him, it exercises your discernment to recognize what's of him. And the sheep know his voice and they do follow him. And he refines us more and more to recognize what truly is his voice. It's okay that you're, that we're all in these, these stages of growth, but he's faithful to teach the sheep who he is and how to recognize his voice more and more. So I encourage you guys to stay close to him and to recognize the power of simply obeying whatever the Lord says to do. Whether that's doing something that doesn't make sense to you, something you don't even want to do. That's a great um, level of maturity um, to recognize the lack of carnal peace versus the lack of what we call spiritual peace, where a good example would be God says to give such and such finances to bless somebody, or he says to go talk to somebody. You might have a carnal fear um, to be apprehensive, but at the same time, inwardly, you know that it was the Lord speaking, so you don't have peace. You may not have a physical peace in that situation, but even more so, you don't have a, I'm using the word loosely, but you don't have a spiritual peace. You don't, because um, your, your spirit is aware of what the truth is that you should do. And so when we give place to the Holy Spirit and we let Jesus be Lord over everything, then we find peace even when it doesn't make sense. Um, I'm so, so much in a season of learning to surrender more and more and just know that I'm, I'm called to peace at every moment so that whatever the Lord tells me to do, may it be so for all of us that we just simply obey. I encourage you to sit at his feet, get to know him more, let him teach you, train you, because it's his goal for us to walk as children of God. And I'll close with this in Romans chapter 8. It shares that as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the children or the sons of God. Sons, oftentimes, um, in biblical translation, means like the seed of or to be the flesh of, to be of. Sons meaning uh, male and female. As many as are led by the children of God, they are the sons of God. Some people take that to mean that those are the mature sons of God or children of God. And I do understand that there is a maturity in when we are intentional to obey the Lord. Um, but there are, there's understandably different degrees. I would say this, that if there is no being led by the Spirit, there is no, then the person is not saved. And the reason I say it like that, please hear me out, is if Jesus is your Lord, your Master, you can't even help but having fruit showing that you're following God, to some degree at least, and uh, to many degrees if it's better to say that way. For example, acknowledge the Lord in all your ways and he shall direct your paths, right? If Jesus isn't your Lord or your Master, then it's not even Christianity in the first place. But if he is your Lord, your Master, then you're growing and obeying him. And the written word, as I've shared before, I really just feel like the Lord is telling me though, he wants, he wants to show you guys great signs and wonders. And so we, we got to learn to be vulnerable, to to be led by Him, to walk in faith, and let Him show us these awesome, great things. So Father, I pray, Lord, that You'd bless them, Lord, in um, hearing Your voice, Lord, in um, walking with You, being a hearer and doer of Your written word and Your Your spoken word, Father God. Hallelujah. So I really encourage you. After this video, please don't rush to do anything because that was here. Let me speak to them. So, literally, you know, I was trying to say something, and that's okay though. So, I highly encourage you if you can just go hide in a closet or something, just have some alone time with the Lord. Let Him confirm to you the truth of what He wanted you to hear through this because He truly wants us all to go deeper and walk with Him. God bless you.